hit the high notes when they needed to hit the high notes, hit the low notes when they needed to hit the low notes. And then I, I kind of got discouraged and I said, well, we need, we need a lot of help. A lot of help. <laughs> but that helps us depend on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Plus, he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. So we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are y'all excited to open up the Word of God this morning? Amen. I know that I am because the Word of God brings life. Life more abundantly. If you'll go with me to Revelation 12, 17. We're not going to stay there because we usually do that on Sunday nights. But we're going to start there for just a brief moment. You get there and say amen or oh me. This is going to be one of the amen sermons. Oh me. It's not me. It's going to be an amen sermon. I, I had that feeling. Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads to you. Lord, we come before you, dear Lord, and ask, Lord, that you help us to understand what you're saying in this word. Lord, help the old bug man preacher to get out of the way. Lord, let the Holy Spirit move and teach us this morning. Lord God, I pray that there be anybody in here that's going through things, Lord, that the word come forth and set them free. Take the chains of bondage off of the Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for preserving your word. And in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here, the dragon, of course, is, is Satan. And the woman, there's many theologians that interpret that the woman to be Israel. And sure, type and shadow, Israel was the woman at first because salvation comes through the Jews, through Jesus Christ. But now the woman is the bride of Christ because right now the Jews do not bring the testimony of Jesus Christ. But the bride, the church, brings the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to keep His commandments. Amen? Amen? Well, have you been feeling attacked lately? Because, I mean, Satan is angry. Trust me. He's angry with you for several different reasons. But there's one main reason he's really angry with the church, the bride, the woman. Because we bring forth the man-child. The man-child is Christ Jesus. And when we bring forth our testimonies, when we bring forth the gospel, <coughs> When we minister to others, when we preach about Jesus, or we just when we shout about Jesus, amen, it makes him angry. You know what I mean? Because it, it doesn't say the testimony of Jehovah. It doesn't say the testimony of Yahweh. And it certainly does not say the testimony of Allah. Because Jehovah and Yahweh was definitely the names of God in the Old Testament. But now it says in Ephesians 3, 14 and 15, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now we know the name that is above all names, as it says in Philippians 2, 10, 9 and 10. But for by that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, every knee in the heavens and the earth and under the earth. He's got a name above all names. So when you bring forth the name of Jesus Christ and you stand on the solid rock, Satan is angry with you. He'll attack you in your mind. He'll attack you in your finances. He'll attack you in your health. He will attack the church. He will attack you in the nation. And this nation is under attack. There's no doubt about it. The enemy has attacked this nation. Will you turn with me to Matthew 16 real fast? Matthew 16. Because this is going to be the solid foundation that we have to stand on. We saints are not perfect people. I didn't get no amens on that. <laughs> we saints are not perfect people. Amen. We fall short of the commandments of God. So you've seen that verse we just said a while ago, those who keep the commandments of God. We fall short many times of the commandments of God. And thank the Lord that we can put our faith and trust in Christ and He crucified and what He paid for. He is our blood covering. If not, we'd all be in trouble. There's some people that think they can live right, a righteous life without Jesus, and they'll mention Jesus every now and then, but they'll have a dress cold, and they'll have a hair cold, and they'll have all kind of colds, and they think they're doing pretty good. But let me tell you something. We cannot keep the law. There's no way. You can keep the moral law through the Holy Spirit, but you can't keep the, all these festivals and laws that men make up, and dress codes and everything else. We must put our faith in what Christ paid for at the cross Amen. for the power Amen. of God Amen. to help Amen. our Amen. lives. We understand that. But 
The main commandment that this is talking about in Revelation 12, 17 is what I'm fixing to go over. Matthew 16, verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 14, and they said, and they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Borjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in earth, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We see right here that Jesus, Jesus asks us the same things today, just like he asked them. Who do you say that I am? That's who he's asking. He, he's not asking who does your denomination say that Jesus is, or who that your father said Jesus is, or who that your mama said Jesus is, or who that your brothers and sisters say Jesus is, but he's asking who do we say Jesus is. You see, it's all personal. When you get before the throne in heaven, your pastor's not going to be beside you. <laughs> no, your mom and daddy's not going to be beside you. It's going to be one on one. You're going to have to understand and make the confession that Jesus is the Son of God. That means He's God the Son. You see what I'm saying? He's the Son of God and God the Son. He's the second part of the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And that's what Satan's mad at. He knows that sometimes we come out of certain sins and we keep certain commandments and everything. He, he, that aggravates him. But he gets really wroth and angry when we keep the foundation commandment that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God the Son. When we deify Jesus, it tears him apart because that's exactly what's being attacked right now. You've got the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, you've got Islam and many different religions that attack the deity of Jesus Christ. We as Christians must stand on this commandment because Jesus Christ called himself the Alpha and the Omega. Matter of fact, we must believe Jesus is by the Word of God. We must believe what the Word of God says about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And here's what it says. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father, John 3.16. He is the great I Am, according to John 5.58. God Almighty in the flesh, according to John 1, 1-14. The Savior, Matthew 